lighting. One LED strip here, one LED strip here, one LED strip here. This face plate that goes on here will cover this one. This face plate will cover this one. And this one can go inside this cavity. I don't want to have to plug this in each time, so I'm going to put a switch right here. This is called uh, an old work box. And when you turn that screw, this thing flips up and back and screws and holds this together and it does a really nice job. Um, so what you gotta do is cut a hole and the way you do that is you mark it out and nice dark lines so you can see what you're doing. Doesn't have to be really accurate. Okay. Take a speed square, you want it to be square. Okay, now you want the hole a little bit bigger than the box. The box will slide in, but you don't want it sloppy. And the corners are usually the worst, so what I do is I drill in four corners with a pretty good sized drill. So the, that little corner will be oblonged a little bit. Saber saw. And if I did everything all right, this should slide in there. Like so. Nice tight fit. And then you turn these screws, and that turns the flap down, and that'll make it so you can't get this out. But I gotta punch out the areas where you put the wires in first. So what's happened here is the flap for this one is, is falling down. So if I rotate it up, it'll come right out. So now I'm gonna prepare the box for wires. I'm gonna need power in, and I'm gonna have to feed two lights, three lights. So let's get that wiring done. We've made uh, some progress, and I've changed a couple things. You'll note there's two holes. Um, one's going to be for light and one's going to be for the controller for the power coat. That way you can turn the lights on and use the booth for sanding and whatever. And if we need the controller for the power coat, we can turn that on. We've got uh, three lights. Uh, they're LED lights. Each one can be turned off individually and the switches will be reachable once the cabin is done, so if it's too much light, you can turn a light off. And there will be a skirting, and this is just an example, that'll go up like that, so it'll hide the light, and you'll just get the light from the light. I always hate it when you see the light, the source of the light. I don't want to see the result of the light. So if I put a skirt around here, it's going to hide these tubes. And the simplest of all method, I just drill a little hole in the diffuser, and screwed it to the cabinet. This third light here actually fits back into the recess that I left for the switches and all that stuff. This does not have vacuum in it. It's not vacuum controlled, so I can do whatever I want there. Uh, wires will go into here. This wire will go into here. So I have full access to the back of this. I have a uh, cheap extension cord here that I really wouldn't use to run power tools. It's probably 14 gauge, might even be 16 gauge. But to run LED lights in the powder coat controller, it's fine. So rather than cut these plugs off, I'm gonna run this into the switch and I use that and I'll just plug the lights into it so that I don't destroy the cords. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the powder coat controller. I'll find a piece of wire, put a plug on the end of it and then plug this into the end of that and that way I don't ruin the cord for the powder coat controller. So that's the kind of the next step. We'll do some of this electrical. I'll bring you back when I'm wiring the switches. So this is a little different because it's all stranded. 
normally use uh, solid core wire when I wire stuff but I'm using old extension cords so that I don't have to cut the ends off so all the lights will plug in this end and it runs to the outlet and that way I don't have to cut any of these wires and I've done the same thing for the powder coat let's see powder coat so it's the end of an old extension cord that uh, the cord had been laid across the driveway and people ran over it so the center was all punctured but the ends were okay so I just cut the end off and I'm plugging the power cord into that and running it to the outlet. So this is going to be powder coat. This is the lights. This is really pretty much ready to go. Let's put this uh, switch up so it's out of the way. I like to leave enough wire so you can pull everything out of the box. So if you ever got to do anything, you got wire. It doesn't hurt you to put the wire in a box. Okay, that's convenient. Uh, let's wire this. So, what we've got is power coming from power coming from this box from the extension cord from this box up to here, and that's this one right here. And this is the power that's going out to the powder coat. The only side we're switching is the hot, uh, so the two commons go together. So I try to get the wires all laying nice and neat, see there, you get it so it's not a tangled mess inside the box, and cut them off so they're even. I really like these wire strippers, they work well. And then I twist these things together nice and tight. I get, I get kind of a V, kind of a V, and I can put them flat between my fingers, and then I twist, and I get a real nice, tight twist. Now, wire nuts. Wire nuts come in different colors and sizes. And right on the side, it will tell you how many wires they want in each wire nut. So I can put two 14s in a, in a row. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay. So that goes up in here. I'll try to fold them in as they go. Now with, with solid core, you put it back in there like that and it's going to stay back there. This is going to tend to want to come out. Now this is ground and there is a ground lug on the switch. So we want to run another wire for the ground. And then the nice thing about this is if it's not quite long enough, you can go back and just take a little piece off and make it nice and long. You know, enough wire sticking out. So I have another piece here. Now this is three 14s. So that won't fit inside the orange. So we got to go up to the next one. Spread them out. Twist them up. Nice and tight. Stick on the nut. Stuff it back in the box. Nice and neat. Alright. So now we got a ground wire for the, the switch and the two hots. Now two hots get them the same length. Now, because I'm using terminals, I don't need that much wire exposed. That's good enough. Now, I am going to do a, a video on how to do these crimp connections, connections, but it's interesting. It's kind of changing right now. They just come out with a new connector that is 
a low temperature solder connector that I may have to switch to. But this is a heat shrink and these are the best crimpers I've come across and there is a way, correct way to crimp. When they make this terminal, there is a slit right there. So they, this is all one flat piece and then they bend these two tabs up around to make the, the hole for the wire. So you want to take the punch portion of the crimp and put it on the bottom side so that when you squeeze, the crimp doesn't push the split apart. Instead, it pushes it together. So the crimp crimps the bottom and the split stays together and that's what holds the wire. It's a friction connect. And I like to put it on the crimp and then slide this onto the wire like so, so that I'm ready to crimp. I mean, I don't need, I don't have to dislodge the wire and now that's crimped. These crimpers are interesting in that they have two different colored handles and you want the black one up. So if you pick it up so the black one is up, the crimper thing is on the bottom. If you hold the, the connection up, then everything is crimped correctly. And you don't cram down because you don't want to break the plastic, but you want to squeeze it enough so you got a good, good tight connection. And then I can't tell you how many times I've seen people take a, a lighter or a torch to heat these heat shrinks and you end up with a, a, a blackened, it, it terrible. Use a heat gun. It doesn't take that long to heat up and it does a much better job. No burnt wires. Okay, what I want you to watch is, uh, this is the heat shrink right here. And you'll see it collapse onto the wire. When it actually makes contact with the wire, it changes color, it looks like it's wet. Okay, here we go. See how it collapses? And I move around a little bit. And if you watch, see how the wire just turned black on the inside? That tells me it's in contact and we're done. So now we're ready to install the switch. And I do have two light switches, so that's a good thing. You want to put on, up, Goes like so. Doesn't make any difference which side it goes on. Nice tight connection. So if you see this tab right here, you can bend that back and forth and it'll break off right on that score line. And now what happens in this style box is it will sit down in between those tabs nice and flush and allow your faceplate to come up tight against the wall. So see what happens here is these tabs are what's holding the box from going in and the tabs on the back side that rotated up and back of the plywood are holding the box from coming forward. But these protrude a little bit. So if you break those two, four tabs off, the, the switch will sit down flush with the box itself, and now the cover will go down and sit flush on the wall. So if I've done everything right, so this is the last end of the extension cord, which I've run down and out the back. If I plug this in, I have lights. Why do I have lights? I got the switch in upside down. How about that? I'm going to have to turn that around. This one is correct though, see? All right, I got to turn the switch around, no big deal. And then we'll move forward. We'll get these lights mounted. And now we're going to move on to the Lazy Susan that's going to be in the top of this box.